Welcome to the software patent review where we look at real European patents to find out what's actually patentable in the software space and also to spot common mistakes which you can avoid if you watch this video to the end. Today's patent is a special one because it is one of the European patents granted to DeepMind. In case you don't know DeepMind Technologies, that's a British artificial intelligence company which became famous in 2016 when their AI program called AlphaGo defeated defeated the human world champion in the game of Go. And in 2014, DeepMind was acquired by Google for $500 million. There's also a documentary on Netflix called AlphaGo. Highly recommended if you're interested in uh, the background. Now, let's look at the patent. As I said, the proprietor is DeepMind Technologies. The patent was filed in May 2017 and granted just very recently in October 2021. So roughly four and a half years of prosecution, which is a little bit over average, I would say. The title of the patent is Reinforcement Learning Using Pseudo Counts. So let's look at the description to get some context. The background section of the patent is rather short. It just simply says that uh, it relates to reinforcement learning. Other than that, this section only basically says that neural networks can be used, but there does not seem to be any problem stated which the invention solves. But then in the summary, they kind of reveal what, what the real gist of the invention is. For example, they say that um, the system combines bonus rewards, which are inversely proportional to pseudo counts derived from a sequential density model, with actual rewards that resulted from the agent performing actions. And the invention then uses the combined rewards to train the neural network. And this way, so the patent, the neural network can incentivize the agent to explore an environment more thoroughly. So that's kind of the backstory of the technology underlying this invention. The scope of protection is, of course, not defined in the description, which we just looked at, but in the patent claims. So let's have a look at the patent claims. So claim one is directed to a computer implemented method for training a neural network. So it talks about essentially what I just explained and then then in the end, it generates a combined reward from the actual reward and the exploration reward bonus, and then adjusts current values of parameters of the neural network using the combined reward. So the network is then retrained over time. All in all, I would say uh, on first glance, that's a pretty nicely written um, computer implemented method claim, which lists out uh, pretty clearly the steps that the software has to do in order to create the invention. Now, what is interesting to note here is that uh, this method essentially defines a, a new way of doing reinforcement learning, right? One of the fundamental um, techniques underlying machine learning and artificial intelligence. And if you've watched my other videos, you will know that the European Patent Office currently has kind of a difficult time with granting patents for core innovations in AI. So new structures of a neural network or new training methods as such are um, considered uh, just abstract mathematical constructs by the European Patent Office and there are no patents granted on those mathematical constructs. Nevertheless, uh, DeepMind got a patent granted here. So what happened? Well, let's look at the claim again and we see that the claim has some additional limitations because it uh, con concerns a method for training a neural network used to select actions to be performed by an agent interacting with an environment. And then it is also limited to the fact that the agent is a mechanical agent and the environment is a real world environment. So in essence, DeepMind restricted their innovation here to the use within a robot which navigates through the real world. And this way, the whole mathematical part the training algorithm has a direct link to physical reality, namely it controls um, uh, the robot, the mechanical agent. And my suspicion is that Google DeepMind did this in response to the recent landmark decision G1 of 19. Um, I've talked about that one in other videos. And I guess that's the way how the prosecution procedure went, because if we look at claim one as originally filed in the PCT application, we see that it was directed to um, selecting actions to be performed by an agent interacting with an environment. So without any limitation to a physical system. And also in the description, it states that um, in paragraph 27, that 
in some implementation, the environment is a real world environment and the agent is a mechanical agent. And in uh, paragraph 28, it says that in other implementations, the environment is a simulated environment and the agent is implemented as one or more computers interacting with the simulated environment. So here, the, the invention was really also meant to cover pure virtual uh, simulations. Now that we all know G1 of 19, we know that it's quite difficult to patent these kinds of simulation methods. And that's probably why the patent claim had to be restricted to the mechanical agent um, uh, embodiment. And also in the description of the granted patent, we see that, of course, the mechanical embodiment is still there. And the other embodiment is now said to be not covered by the scope of the claims. So I guess this patent is a pretty good example of the current approach of the European Patent Office, which says that innovations in core AI as such are not patentable because that's pure math for the European Patent Office, but you only get patents for these kinds of inventions if the AI is really applied to a technical field. Let's look at uh, the other claims in the granted claim set quickly. And here we can see that uh, besides the independent method claim one, we have a number of dependent method claims as fallback positions. And then we have two additional independent claims. Claim nine is directed to one or more computer storage media encoded with instructions that when executed by one or more computers, uh, uh, execute the method uh, claims then essentially. And claim 10 finally is directed to a system comprising the one or more computer storage media of claim nine and one or more computers for executing the instructions. So unlike the method claim one, Claim 10 is directed to an apparatus, a computer plus a storage medium which stores the software. But, and that's a bit surprising for me, the claim set does not include a computer program claim. You can get that at the European Patent Office, no problem at all. And the computer program claim is infringed by any competitor which only uh, sells the software part of the invention, irrespective of a tangible medium such as a storage media which is required in claim nine. So probably um, that would be my only suggestion for this patent at this end to use the formulation recommended by the European Patent Office. It's even in the guidelines. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help me spread the word and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.